Hello everyone, uh, today I would like to discuss with you exciting opportunity to study new area which is called nanomedicine. Uh, let me first introduce myself. I am Professor Renat Letfullen, Professor from Roshalman Institute of Technology and uh, there is my contact information. Also I have a web page and you guys welcome to browse my web page and see what kind of courses I am teaching and what kind of projects I am doing. Uh, I have over the 25 years of research experience and I am doing research in the four main areas. Uh, one of my areas of research is laser physics including super high energy lasers which can be based on the spacecraft or aircraft like Star Wars. Uh, another area of my research is uh, optics including wave optics, quantum optics. Uh, another area of my research biophotonics including the nanomedicine and last one is the nanoscience and nanotechnology including the optics of small particles, nanoparticles. And I published uh, about 150 papers and conference proceeding including 12 book chapters in the seven different books also, I am uh, editor for International Journal of Theoretical Physics, Group Theory and Nonlinear Optics. So let me first discuss with you new technological frontiers and new directions in the science and technology in the 21st century. But before doing this, uh, I would like to remind you briefly what the main discoveries were made in the last century, in the 20th century. Uh, of course, in the physics we did a lot of discovery. Uh, if we look on the physics at the beginning of the century, Albert Einstein uh, discovered the special theory of relativity in 1905. Then uh, quantum mechanics born, was born. Then um, we did a lot of discovery in the atomic and nuclear physics. Uh, we invented the laser and laser becomes universal tool in many applications. Uh, many discoveries we did also in the microelectronics, including the uh, uh, designing and uh, discovering the computer. And today we cannot imagine our life without computer. Uh, we did the many uh, development in the high-speed communication and discovering the internet. And of course, tran transportation uh, did a lot of changes uh, in the transportation in the last 20th century. And these discoveries were made in the last century. But what is a new direction? You probably heard that the trademark of the 21st century is the nanotechnology. But also a lot of development goes in the biology, in the environment, energy, and sustainability. So, and speaking about the natural sciences, uh, we can uh, uh, select free main frontiers in the science and technology, nano, bio, info. This is a new technological frontiers. And the nanomedicine uh, combines the two of them, combines the nanotechnology and biotechnology. And nanomedicine is a new science, which is new science in the 21st century. And today we will spend a little time, I will introduce you nanomedicine. Uh, let me try to uh, define the nanomedicine. What is a nanomedicine? Uh, easiest way to do that uh, is compare the nanomedicine to already established sciences. Uh, nanomedicine based on the biophysics and the biophysics is an interdisciplinary science which uh, combines the physics and biology and nanomedicine uh, takes the, some stuff and uh, topics from biology like uh, cytology, microbiology and other topics. From physics many topics like optics, thermodynamics, kinetics and so on. But also nanomedicine uses the technology and uh, I called this engineering. And engineering gives the uh, new optical technologies for nanomedicine, laser technologies, technologies nanotechnologies. And uh, biophysics provides the fundamental knowledge for nanomedicine and engineering provides the tools and new technologies and everything is needed for what? Everything is needed for diagnosis and treatment of diseases. 
this is a subject of for investigation. But this subject is very wide, and actually this is a subject for another science, for medical physics. And that's why nanomedicine is part of the medical physics. Medical physics has some branches like uh, imaging, radiation oncology, photodynamic therapy, and nanomedicine. Now we see the relationship of the nanomedicine with the basic established sciences. Nanomedicine based on the biophysics uses the tools from engineering and everything is needed for diagnosis and treatment of diseases. Now we are ready to give the definition, simple definition of the nanomedicine. Nanomedicine is an interdisciplinary science which involves the sciences like the physics, chemistry, biology, medicine, optics and other sciences for diagnosis and treatment of diseases by means of nanotechnology. And nanomedicine uh, tries to repair human body uh, at the atomic and molecular level, uh, like we're uh, fixing conventional machines today. And the key word in the definition of the nanomedicine is a nanotechnology. What is a nanotechnology? You probably heard many times definition of the nanotechnology. Let me remind you the definition of nanotechnology. A word nano came from the Greek language, which is, means something small, dwarf. And the, in the science, nano means one billionth. When we say nanometer, we mean one billionth of meter. One billionth is a 10 in negative 9 meters. And the, any science, it could be biology, could be chemistry, could be medicine, could be physics, which deals with the subject of investigation in the size range from the 1 to 100 nanometers is called nanoscience and is called nanotechnology. So it's an interdisciplinary science, it's a mixture of sciences, any science which uh, investigates the object in the size range from 100 to 100 nanometer range is called nanotechnology. And uh, nanotechnology create these nanostructures, create the new nanomachines, nanodevices, uh, studying the unique properties of the nanomaterials, because the uh, property of the materials changes a lot when we're uh, using small sizes, nano sizes. How the nanotechnology and how the nanoscience can uh, prove and improve the medicine today? Can, how can we apply it for the medicine? If you come to the clinic today, a uh, clinic today can offer the following imaging and treatment modalities like uh, radiography, fluoroscopy, mammography, computed tomography, nuclear medicine, positron emission tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, chemotherapy, magnetic field treatment, microwave treatment, and radiofrequency treatment. So many modalities. Actually, they are doing the job and uh, they have some advantages. And let me just uh, uh, list some advantages of these modalities today. Uh, these modalities allow deep penetration inside the body. It also uh, allows whole body scan, like is shown on the right side of the slide. It uh, gives us an opportunity to make the slice scan to see specific area uh, on the body. Uh, it's a fast scan. The whole body scan takes less than an hour. Uh, position accuracy. It gives the density information. Organ structure and boundaries uh, on the CT scanners. We see, for example, very nicely position of the organs, structure of the organs, boundary of the organs. And it's allowed diagnosis and treatment of big tumors. Under big, I mean the uh, special resolution of the uh, CT scanner. Special resolution is about one millimeter. So uh, the CT scanners today can see the tumors one millimeter and bigger. But the one millimeter already consists of thousands of the cancer cells. That's why I'm calling this big tumor. And uh, uh, another advantage is uh, these uh, imaging and treatment modalities extend the patient life, which is also very important. But this imaging and treatment modalities uh, has also disadvantages. And what kind of disadvantages I see here? Uh, first of all, today's imaging and treatment modalities uh, cannot treat and see the single cell 
cannot treat and uh, diagnose the single cell level of the disease. Also cannot uh, detect and uh, treat at the DNA level. And uh, we know that, uh, for example, cancer is a DNA disease, is a mutation of the DNA, but uh, today imaging modalities uh, do not allow to us to uh, diagnose and detect and to treat at the DNA level. Uh, that's why it becomes late diagnosis and treatment. When we see the tumor, tumor is already one millimeter and bigger and contains the thousands of cells and uh, creates the metastasis, so unable to detect and to treat on time metastasis. Uh, and also, it's not selective treatment. When we're treating the tumor, we're using the radiation therapy or chemotherapy, and it actually affects the healthy cells, and healthy cells can be damaged, and healthy t tissue can be damaged. Uh, another disadvantage, when we're using uh, X-ray treatment, X-ray treatment doses, uh, X-ray treatment doses can uh, cause the secondary cancer. Unable to treat effectively bone cancer and the marrow, and you know that the marrow is responsible for immune system of the human body, for producing the blood cells, and when the cancer reaches the marrow, reaches the cancer, uh, reaches the bone, the patient eventually dies. Uh, and today we have the effective, efficient uh, treatment and imaging modalities for bone cancer. Uh, unable to complete uh, cancer cure, reoccurrences occur after the treatment, and our patient eventually die. And another disadvantage of the today's modalities, they are very expensive. Multi-million dollar machines and uh, treatment proce process is very expensive. But how to improve that and how to solve these disadvantages? And here nanotechnology comes. And the nanomedicine as a future medicine can help us to solve and improve and uh, resolve all these disadvantages. Nanomedicine can detect and uh, treat the cancer or another disease at the single cell level, can detect at the DNA level. It becomes early diagnosis and treatment. Uh, metastasis uh, will not be needed to treat because we're diagnosing at the early stage. Uh, it's a selective treatment, healthy cells and tissue will not be damaged and has uh, a lot of advantages in comparison with today modalities. Um, and uh, if we look on this slide, actually nanomedicine tries to uh, fix and uh, uh, treat the every side of the human body. Uh, and as I told before, nanomedicine uh, ultimate goal of the nanomedicine is a treat of the human body as a conventional machine we're fixing today. So nanomedicine in the future will tra treat and brain and the legs and the other organs of the human body. All the human body could be treated by the nanomedicine. Uh, let me list some applications of the nanomedicine. Uh, first I will list and then we'll give you some examples. So uh, nanomedicine can improve imaging. Uh, can be used for drug delivery, for strong drug delivery, for DNA analysis, for selective nanophotothermolysis of cancer, for implant materials, nanotechnology makes them more stronger and lighter, uh, can produce and regen regenerate artificial tissue, improving brain capability, cleaning teeth, lungs, and arteries. Uh, now let me give you a few examples of the application of nanomedicine. Drug delivery. Uh, nanoparticles, especially nanoshells and nanotubes, uh, can be used uh, as a delivery vehicle for very strong drugs. These strong drugs can kill the cancer cells, can kill the tumor, but they are so strong you cannot take this orally and the patient will die if we'll take directly these drugs. But the nanoshell can uh, transport these nanodrugs, uh, strong drugs, into the tumor site and attach to the cancer cells and the cancer, then the drug can be released and the cancer will be destroyed. Also, uh, nanoparticles can be used as a, itself as a drug. Uh, we can attach the nanoparticles to the cancer cells, then we can use the radiation, activate these nanoparticles and kill the tumor. Uh, another application, improved imaging. Nanoparticles has a unique optical properties. It's called plasmon resonance scattering. 
uh, gold or metal nanoparticles in the near infrared range of spectrum and visible range of spectrum has this unique property, plus one resonance scattering property. Due to this uh, effect, uh, the nanoparticles can be seen by the radiation. They flashing, they scattering a lot of light. So we can attach these nanoparticles to the cancer cells uh, and then use the radiation and see the single cells. Even if the patient has a single cell inside the body, it can be seen uh, by using these nanoparticles due to this plasmon resonance scattering effect. Uh, this idea also used for DNA analysis. Uh, we can attach these nanoparticles to the genes of the DNA and then we can scan the by using our radiation and see the DNA structure and we can decode the DNA and uh, make the DNA analysis much faster than conventional methods we have today. Uh, another interesting application, uh, cleaning machines, uh, cleaning nanorobots. Uh, you can take these machines inside the mouth and these machines will clean uh, the harmful bacteria 24-7 and uh, in the future you will not even brush your teeth because these nanomachines will do the job and clean the harmful bacteria on your mouth. And the size of the nanomachines is too small. You cannot see uh, these nanomachines by naked eye. Even optical microscope cannot see. Only e e electron microscopy can be used to see the nanoparticles. Uh, this idea also used for cleaning uh, lungs. Uh, you can inhale these nanomachines and they will clean the lungs from the uh, uh, toxic particles in the lungs from the smoking or uh, harmful bacteria in the uh, lungs or fibers of asbestos. So 24-7 again and uh, you will not feel anything and they will uh, do this job cleaning the lungs and uh, improve your breathing capabilities. Uh, this application uh, cleaning uh, blood vessels, so nanomachines can be injected in the blood vessels and the blood arteries and they are cleaning the uh, walls of the blood arteries from the harmful proteins and the fat and which is uh, very important for the prevention of the heart diseases. Uh, another interesting application, improving brain capabilities. Uh, uh, today uh, we can uh, create the nanochips and nanochip has a memory. Uh, we can then inject the bunch of these nanochips uh, inside the brain. They will attach to the nerve of the brain, then uh, create the uh, network structure. After that you can upload entire library, download entire library on these nanochips and instead of browsing internet in the future, you can browse your mind. So it looks like a scientific fiction, but it uh, can be done. It's uh, based on the fundamental research, based on the nanoscience. So nanoscience has a lot of interesting uh, opportunities and applications. Uh, nanomaterials can be used for creating new materials, new implant materials, which are much stronger and much lighter another application of nanomedicine. Uh, also uh, nanotubes, uh, nanoparticles can be used for regenerating skin and the bone tissue and now the research is going to trying to uh, regenerate sophisticated organs uh, by means of nanotubes and the nanomaterials. And uh, in the Radiological Technologies University we actually proposing and designing uh, first degree, master degree in the nanomedicine and our purpose for the students to develop and to prepare and to train next generation of clinicians, ne next generation of the scientists who will be leaders and the champions in nano health. We are offering master degree which will be two uh, years degree with 41 science credit hours with two three week clinical rotations and you see on the slides the curriculum for this degree. Also uh, will be offered dual major degree uh, in the medical physics and nanomedicine and this table contains the two-year curriculum for dual major program uh, for, for the nanomedicine and the medical uh, physics which is a 57 credit science credit hours. Uh, nanomedicine co-courses, uh, if you will take this uh, program, you will be studying nanotechnology one, nanomedicine one, practical research seminar, 
where the students will learn how to do fundamental research, nanotechnology too, nanomedicine too, research design sequences in cancer nanomedicine, nanomedicine seminar, clinical internship. Let me give some examples of the courses of which, uh, can, uh, which the, uh, create this core of nanomedicine program. Here you see the brief description of each course. Um, in the next slide, I can show you the um, uh, example Nanomedicine 2 course. The uh, main goal of this course is to study the basic mechanisms of the radiation interaction with biological system containing nanostructures. And the students who will take this four credit hour course will get the skills in theoretical analysis and modeling of the basic mechanisms, skills in uh, computer uh, programming, and uh, skills in uh, writing research reports and papers, communication skills by presenting their results. Another example, uh, research experience, practical seminar research experience. Here students will learn how to do fundamental research, step-by-step -step technology based on my 25 years of research experience and the students will solve the real life examples, research examples, fundamental uh, science examples on this uh, seminar course. Uh, we prepare a threefold uh, brochure flyer in nanomedicine program for nanomedicine program which contains our contact information and brief description of our program. Uh, welcome to write emails to us and contact to us and we will send you more detailed information about this program. And in conclusion, let me uh, one more time emphasize what the nanomedicine can bring today for the human society. I am calling the nanomedicine as a smart medicine, as a future medicine. It uh, uh, will give us the fast and the painless treatment. Why it's fast? Because sometimes the nanomedicine uses the ultra-short pulses. Ultra-short is a picosecond pulses, femtosecond pulses. Picosecond is a 10 in negative 12 seconds, and the femtosecond 10 in negative 15 seconds. So in one short uh, pulse, 10 in minus 15 seconds, and cancer gone. Why it's painless? Because it's a uh, pulse duration so short, the human nerve system doesn't react on the short amount of the time. That's why the patient will not feel anything during this uh, treatment. Just one short pulse with the nanoparticles and the uh, cancer is gone. Nanomedicine will provide early diagnosis at the single uh, cell level and the DNA level. And the metastasis treatment can be done on time. Also, nanomedicine will solve the bone uh, cancer problems. And in the future, nanomedicine will defe defeat the cancer for good and to give the life for cancer patients. Thank you.